Pediatric Clinical Skills from PedsCases.com and the Stollery Children's Hospital. This video will introduce you to lumbar puncture, an important clinical skill in pediatric medicine. The most common indication for lumbar puncture in pediatrics is to look for a CNS infection such as meningitis or encephalitis. You must also ensure that there are no contraindications. These include hemodynamic instability, signs of increased intracranial pressure such as focal neurologic deficits or depressed level of consciousness, a bleeding tendency, or infection at the site. Finally, you must obtain informed consent from the parents or guardians. If possible, 20 to 30 minutes before the procedure, you should apply a topical local anesthetic to the site. Commonly used anesthetics are Maxiline and Emla. Landmarking is important both for the application of the anesthetic and for performing the procedure itself. We'll review it now. Identify the iliac crest on each side of the infant. Place one finger on each crest and trace your fingers together across an imaginary line. This will lead you to the site of the puncture in the midline, at about the L3 or L4 level. This is below the end of the spinal cord. You may find it helpful to hold a finger of your non-dominant hand at that space to mark the spot. This will also allow you to feel if the child is rotating away from you. Lumbar puncture should be performed in a sterile manner. You will need to put on a gown, gloves, and a mask. This is not shown in this video so that you can more easily see the hand movements required. Your equipment will come on a reusable or a disposable tray. Your tray will contain drapes, several containers, gauze, and a few basic instruments. Often it will have tubes. If not, tubes must be placed on your tray prior to beginning the procedure. Tubes should be opened before you begin to facilitate filling once you have successfully obtained CSF flow. Open your needle and place it on the tray. It is important to note that there is a stylet within the needle. For infants, you will typically use a 22 gauge 1.5 inch needle. Longer or larger gauge needles will be used for older children and adolescents. Positioning of the infant is critical for a successful lumbar puncture. You need a good helper to position and hold the infant. Your assistant should be experienced and should respond to your feedback about positioning. The helper will hold the hips and shoulders, curling the child in a position to open up the interspinous processes. Infant lumbar punctures are typically not sedated, so the infant must be firmly held. Many helpers tend to curl the baby away from you, rolling their spine upwards. However, it is essential that the length of the baby's spinal cord is parallel to the table. Remember, the right alignment is critical. Also note, lumbar puncture can be done with the patient sitting up and curled forward. This is more commonly done in older adolescent patients. This is not shown in the video. Cleaning of the site should be performed in a circular motion, working from the inside out. Clean well beyond the area you will drape with chlorhexidine and betadine. Do this three times. The baby's diaper should be off by this point. Place your drapes so as to create an opening through which everything is sterile. There are a number of different ways to drape the child. One is shown here. It is now time to perform the procedure and obtain the cerebrospinal fluid. Remember that your needle must have a stylet in it. The stylet needs to be in or else tissue can be pushed into the spinal canal. This can cause a devastating local reaction. Make sure that you are comfortable. Many people prefer to be sitting during the procedure, in which case it is important to make sure the surface that the infant is on is at an appropriate height. Stabilize your dominant hand on the baby's sacrum and aim towards the umbilicus. You should aim towards the umbilicus so that you can pass between the spinous processes. If you go in perpendicular to the skin, 
you are much more likely to hit bone, as you can see in this model. As you move the needle in, you may or may not feel a change in resistance, often called a pop. If you're not sure if there has been a change in resistance, periodically take the stylet out and see if there is CSF flow. If you cannot get flow, put the stylet back in and go a bit further. We check periodically. Once you have flow, collect the fluid in three to four tubes. If you can, get about one centimeter in each tube. Reinsert the stylet, take the needle out, and put pressure on the site with gauze. You can then dispose of sharps. Put a band-aid on and tell the patient and their family that the child should remain supine for at least 30 minutes to minimize the potential post-tap headache. You will typically send off your tubes for cell count, chemistry, bacterial culture, and gram stain, and viral PCR. Other fluid analysis may be necessary depending upon the indication. If there is blood, you will need to decide whether it is blood or bloody CSF. If it is blood, take the needle out and try again. Bloody CSF, however, is not as dark and it will not clot. Eventually, it should run clear. In the case of bloody CSF, use the last collected tube for cell counts to minimize the effect of the blood. This is the conclusion of this video. We hope you found it useful. Our thanks go out to Dr. Karen Forbes of the Stollery Children's Hospital for helping us make this video. And remember, you can always find more great pediatric content online at pedscases.com.